Hello guys, here's James again. Today's episode number 8 and we are looking at how we can animate a sprite sheet in Phaser 3. Before we get started, I want to show you another one of my professionally hand-drawn <laughs> graphics. Because we need to understand that in Phaser 3 we can create animations only one time. If you try to create an animation that already exists, Phaser 3 will throw an error. Now I know that they're going to remove this error in a future Phaser release very soon, but I still want to go over it. Because it doesn't change the fact that we can create animations just one time in Phaser 3 and then we have to reuse these animations for all the sprite sheets where we need it. So that's why we're looking at the current sequence of scenes that we have in our little game. And right now it's very simple, we only have four scenes. We boot up the game in the boot scene and then we load all the assets in the preload scene. Finally we arrive in the menu scene. And between the menu scene and the play scene there's going to be a, a small cycle because from the menu scene we reach the play scene and on game over we always go back to the menu scene. In other words, once a player started the game it is possible to reach the menu scene and play scene multiple times in the same game life, which makes them bad spots to create the animations. So that leaves us with the preload scene to create the animations. This is the scene that is loaded only one time in the whole game life cycle and it is also the scene where we will have the sprite sheets available. So let's go into our scenes folder and open the preload.js file. Then we scroll down to the scenes create method and we're going to call a new method named this create all animus. And then we can scroll to the end of the scene and create this method. Before we start coding it, let me explain to you what these animations actually do. So here we have the player sprite sheet. The first three frames are for walking and the last two frames are simply for being hurt or when he's dead. So when we play the walking animation, we have to cycle through the first three frames over and over very quickly to create the illusion of a walking animation. To be specific, the sequence of frames will be 0, 1, 0, 2. Because as you can see, we need the first frame, the 0 frame, twice to make his legs parallel before he takes the next step. And now to code this animation in Phaser 3, we need to pass it the sequence of frames for the animation. In our case, we are creating the walking animation, so we just need to pass it again the frames 0, 1, 0, 2. So let's go back to our preload scene and write the code. In Phaser 3, we create animations using the animations manager. And on a very basic level, the line of code is this.anims.create. The tricky part is what to pass into this method. We pass it an object with a key, and the key is just the name for the animation by which we can later call it in the game. Then we pass it the frames. As you remember, we just discussed that for the walking animation, we pass it 0, 1, 0, 2. Then repeat, we set to minus 1, which means repeat this animation infinitely and we set the frame rate to 12 meaning it plays the animation at 12 frames per second now for the frame specifically we need to use some more phaser 3 magic we need to use another animations manager method which is called generate frame names according to the documentation it creates an animations frame object from a texture key and the configuration object. Basically what it does is it takes your sprite and then you pass it the frames that you want to use for the animation and it puts it together and creates an animations frames object which Phaser 3 can use to play the animation. That's why the first argument is the key of the sprite sheet which is sprite hero and the second key is the configuration object with the frames. So we can just copy paste the frames into this object. Finally, we can just copy paste this whole line and use it inside the animation creation method. For all my sprites in Endless Cave, I have used the frames 0, 1, 0, 2, 
as the walking animation. That's why I can just copy paste the walking animation for the player sprite and use it for the two monsters, the slime and the spider. All I need to do is I need to replace the keys for the sprite sheet. One time it's the slime sprite sheet, the other time it's the spider sprite sheet. And also each animation needs to have a unique key, a unique name. Also, I hope you noticed the naming convention that I used for all these animations. I always use the sprite name first and then I hyphen it with the name for the animation. For example, here we have Sprite Hero Walk, Sprite Slime Walk and Sprite Spider Walk. All right, so now it's time to jump into the entity prefab and this is where we will play the animations that we've just created. We start out with two new methods, the start new anim and the stop anim. So every time we play a new animation, we first want to make sure that any old animation has stopped. We identify our animations by a key, which we pass to the start new anim method. And we have three different animations. We have the idle animation and the walk and the hurt or dead animation. However, actually only the walking animation is a real animation with multiple frames. The idle animation and the hurt or dead animations are just single frames that we display on the sprite sheet. So to start the idle animation, we just set the sprite's frame to the idle frame. And in the start walk anim method, this is where we now play the animation that we've created previously in the preload scene. We do that by calling the play method on the sprite itself and we pass it the key of the animation, which is the name of the animation. And now you can see why I've used this naming convention of sprite name hyphen animation name because now as we're in the entity prefab we have saved the image name in this dot key property and we can simply use this dot key and hyphen the walk animation name and it will always call the correct animation name for each sprite that we use in the entity prefab. Now let's jump to the create player method inside the play scene and here we can trigger the walking animation by calling our new method this player dot start new anim and pass it the walk key. Now when we refresh the browser window we see our little player dude he's playing the walking animation just as we intended. Let me refresh the window and zoom in so you can see it better. As you can see, right now the player is walking on the spot, which doesn't really make sense. He needs to be moving downwards as well. So let's fix that. For this, we go back into the entity prefab and we create a new section called the setters section. And our first method is called the set sprite position. I like to call these types of setter methods summary methods because all it does is it calls multiple phaser three methods, for example, the set X method and the set Y methods on the sprites. And it just repositions the sprite. It also repositions the shadow if we have one. And we save the X and Y values inside the prefabs properties. Now we can jump back into the play scene and go to the update method this time. And to move the player downwards, we can call this set sprite position method on the player entity. For now, we want our player to move at the exact same speed as the camera does, so we increase his Y coordinate by the camera speed. If we refresh the browser window now, we see that our player is moving perfectly downwards, but there's just one last problem, because as we draw the new floor tiles, they are drawn on top of the player sprite, and then he disappears. We can fix this very quickly by setting the death value of the player. First, we go back into the entity prefab to the setters section and we create a set depth method. We give it a depth value and we just update the depth for the sprite, the player sprite or the entity sprite and also for the shadow if there is one. And inside the play scene, after we have created the player, we set his depth value and in the play scenes initialize method we set the depth value for the player and it has to be a larger number than the depth value for the floor tiles save it and refresh the browser window once again and now you see your player sprite 
walking in the center of your screen, he's walking at the same speed with the camera, he's walking deeper into the cave, and he's always on top of the floor tiles. That's it for today guys, I hope my graphics and sketches at the beginning of this episode helped you understand how animations work and how you can code them using the Phaser 3 framework. In the next episode we'll start creating controls for our player so we can start moving him around in the cave. I hope you liked this episode, please give the video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Also follow me on Twitter for more game updates and leave your questions in the comments below. As always, you can also come on my Discord channel where we talk about general game development stuff. And yeah, see you next time. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.